uh, maybe about a month ago, you published an essay um, that was kind of talking about this new sort of Nazi revisionism we're seeing uh, when talking about Putin and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, it was published about a month ago, um, and I think you mentioned that it's being uh, translated into Arabic and put out today, actually. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, even though it was published a few weeks ago, it's still very relevant. Um, and it talks about the this media trope we're seeing of comparing Putin to Hitler or even saying that Putin is now worse than Hitler. And I think a really good companion article to read along with your essay is um, this FAIR article uh, written by Joshua Cho, which does... Um, uh, a really good media analysis of the way that Putin's been covered in Western media over the past like seven or eight years. Um, he doesn't talk about um, comparisons to Hitler the way that you do, but um, he critically analyzes uh, these stories about Hitler starting from 2014 up until today. And you can sort of see the escalation in rhetoric um, when talking about Putin, right? Um, and so, you know, even before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, when Putin was still considered an enemy of the U.S., he, in Western media, he was often portrayed um, as, like, mentally ill. Um, so a lot of times, like, Western media would, like, kind of say, well, he's a narcissist. They would do like this armchair, um, like psychiatric evaluations on him. Like, and they would say he's yeah. a narcissist or he has Asperger's syndrome. Um, and then after the Russian invasion, he was, it sort of escalated into saying that he was like a madman or irrational. And now in your essay, you talk about how he's being compared to Hitler or that he's worse than Hitler. Um, and, you know, like recently, Michael McFowl went on the Rachel Maddow show yeah, and he sure said, yeah, yeah. And he said, one difference between Putin and Hitler is that Hitler didn't kill ethnic Germans, German speaking people. Hit, uh, Putin slaughters the very people he had. He said he has come to liberate. And then um, I think the I think that I think that was one of the things. I think that was a few days before I wrote the article or the article came yeah. like that. But that was one of that was one of the things that I had in mind with that article. Yeah. That was one of the most prominent kind of conflations with Hitler. And actually, and like you say, actually, the heavy implication being he's actually worse than Hitler. Yeah, yeah. It's now escalated to the point where they're they're going beyond Hitler. They're saying he's worse than Hitler. And um, in a Daily Beast article, Amy Knight, she wrote, perhaps the question of Putin's sanity is beside the point because there is little the West can do about it. Although both Hitler and Stalin were crazy by any psychiatric standard, they were still able to inflict horrific damage and death upon millions of people. But Hitler did not have nuclear weapons and Stalin's hydrogen bomb was still being tested when he died. Putin's nuclear arsenal, on the other hand, could destroy parts of the West in minutes. So um, there we have again, the Putin is even worse than Hitler now. So you wrote extensively about this. Um, so I was wondering, uh, like, what function does this comparison to Hitler or even worse than Hitler uh, serve in as like a media trope? Yeah, well, it's, it, it, that trope kind of builds on an underlying trope, which is the consistent, basically, personalization of entire nation states into their rulers when they are um, enemies of the US. So consistent framing and focus based on Putin. Um, and I think we're going to talk <clears throat> about the broader historical context, um, maybe in a little bit. But you know, obviously, this is we've seen this many times before and still see it now with with other leaders, including Assad, um, Saddam, Milosevic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's a trope, the, the, the broader trope of the constant focus on one leader. Um, and then obviously the comparison with Hitler is kind of building on that trope and they're kind of interconnected. And what both of them 
what both of them serve to do is immediately obscure the broader political and historical context. And that's both the kind of immediate... So, for example, if we're talking about, if we're talking about Russia and Ukraine, that obscures the more immediate, you know, last few, few months, few years context, but then also the longer historical duration of NATO expansion, overthrow of the Soviet Union, etc. Like, all that is, 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 is out of the, the mainstream discourse. And there's a myopic focus on the single leader in question and their alleged character traits. And like you said, it often entails this kind of, you know, just bullshit, like fake psychoanalysis uh, and speculations on mental and physical health and, and, and various other things. Um, one thing it does in many cases and, and has done in the case of, of Putin is it draws again on a kind of pool of Orientalist tropes um, and a, you know, <coughs> a really glaring example of that is, I think it was Newsweek. I mean, it's not, it's not even actually a, a, relative, a particularly recent uh, cover. I think it was a couple of years ago. But Putin is portrayed as literally like, a, you know, Genghis Khan, basically. Uh, you know, the kind of head of an Asiatic horde. And I think it says, you know, Putin embraces his Asian side. Or, you know, it's, it's really that crude. Um, there was a thread going around on Twitter yesterday. Um, yeah, well, I, I, that, yeah. I, was, I was literally about to mention that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, I don't even know exactly who that woman was, but she's like some so, World Economic Forum security member. person, yeah. yeah. With, security with the, studies person. With the screen name Florence of Arabia. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit much, really. But yeah, so that was... That that kind of rhetoric. So, so her argument, if you have if people who haven't seen the thread, is like this kind of convoluted, supposedly evidenced thread arguing that Russians aren't actually European. Um, so again, that's so. That's why, even though, I mean, I, I'm not going to start discussing whether Russians are European or not, but it might sound counter counterintuitive to some people that a Russian could be. Uh, portrayed in an orientalist way but it is it, you know it's happening uh, and has happened uh, and obviously what that does to go back to the, you know these tropes the Hitler and the, we can talk more specifically about Hitler but the the leader focus framing what that does it not only obscures generally the political concept context but it always serves to obscure the West's role uh, which in virtually any crisis or conflict uh, around the world that is being reported on or not in some cases is a, is a direct and malevolent role um, and that's certainly true in the in the case of uh, case of Ukraine and again what that also serves to do is obscure the real reasons for the West's animosity to X ruler or state because the stated reasons for that animosity are, you know they're never the actual true reasons um, and ironically, the the West's um, the rest the West's and specifically the US's kind of main beef or beefs with with Putin are almost a kind of inverse of what they say. You know, it's not because he's unhinged and bloodthirsty and you know all these various uh, things that that get he gets accused of. It's because largely of his the effectiveness and stabilizing influence of his rule on Russia. Um, because, you know, after the overthrow of the, the Soviet Union um, and the, the kind of absolute chaos and privatization and enforced capitalism of, of the 1990s, um, which, you know, enduring which there was an absolute collapse in living standards millions of excess excess deaths you know even according to to un figures which are probably likely to be underestimates you know throughout the former soviet union there were millions and millions of excess excess deaths um and russia was in chaos you had entire industries being privatized and put in the hands of single people who obviously now standardly get referred to as the oligarchs um but what putin has essentially been able to do um this is, and you know, this is not. This I'm just stating this factually. This is what's happened. He's he's kind of been able to, and also I think I need to be careful saying him as if it's you know literally just him. But um, under Putin's leadership, the Russian state has kind of reasserted its power 
and authority uh, in relation to the oligarchic class that that was created uh, in the fall, after the fall of the Soviet Union, with you know, with the willing uh, assistance of the US, um, and they hate him for that. Um, and something that comes to mind with that is um, an interview that Domenico Lucerdo gave, I think in. I think in 2017, not not long before he died. Um, and he makes the point that basically the during that period of chaos in the 90s, under kind of um, under Boris Yeltsin, who was you know a US lackey basically, um, he, in the words of, of, of Domenico Lucerdo, played the role of the you know the great champion for what was essentially a Western colonization effort of Russia. Um, and the West was trying to essentially take control over Russian uh, energy deposits. Um, and Lucerdo says, says explicitly, you know, Putin is not a communist. Because, uh, that, you know, that's, obvious, that's an often, oftentimes thrown at people that even try and speak about this context. Especially yeah, it's a ridiculous are, straw man. Yeah, yeah, especially if they are communists themselves. You know, pe- you know, people have said it to me, like, oh, what are you saying? He's a communist. You defend, you know, obviously mm-hmm. Putin is not a communist. That's clear. But he did want to reassert the Russian state and to stop what was effectively uh, colonization of Russia. And he wanted to, and he's successfully reasserted Russian power over its energy resources. Um, you know, obviously that, that kind of context is, is never going to appear in, in, in mainstream uh, discussions of it. And that's what this relentless focus on Putin and other, other lead, different leaders serves to do. And again, that occurs in the kind of broader context of um, the West being portrayed as reacting to crises and usually trying to, you know, ostensibly trying to resolve them rather than actually the cause of them. Mm-hmm. 